this session we have four exercises. So um, I, I'm gonna go through, so through these exercises, you're gonna learn the dialectical behavior therapy skills. Um, so the first exercise is actually about previous sessions. So tell me a few things you have learned from DBT so far. You know, some people will, maybe you, you learn the dear man, you know, the one you use to ask for something you want, or you learn a distraction technique, or you learn a meditation technique. Some, yeah, tell me something you have learned over the last uh, 10 sessions or 11 sessions. Okay, so this is our first exercise. and and. And if this is your first session with DBT, you know, you can skip this exercise. Um, exercise number two, um, this is, you're gonna learn an exercise, like an activity called the opposite action. You know, I, I'm sure if you have been working with me for a year now, you know that uh, uh, our thoughts uh, can lead to our feeling and our feeling and emotion can end up with our behaviors. Okay, so if you have lots of negative thoughts and the negative energy, you will have negative feeling and the negative feeling will end up with negative behavior uh, or negative action. What we want to learn today is a, is a new skill. Like I want you to, um, when you have thoughts negative and the negative feeling, I want you to do opposite to the action you are expected to do. Uh, and they find like studies find that this technique will alleviate a little bit or reduce the frequency and intensity of negative behavior. I'll give you examples so you'll you'll get what you what, what I'm talking about. You know, for example, you have anger problems, okay? And when people are angry, usually the 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 emotion driven behavior after the anger is you attack other people, you criticize them, you hurt them, you shout at people like. Uh, usually negative behavior, okay? So I want you to, next time you are anger, put in mind that I wanna do the opposite action. So what would be the opposite action to this stuff is to validate, use a soft voice, uh, do some distraction technique, avoid, but don't attack or criticize or hurt other people. So you see, um, for example, fear, if you if you someone, if you are someone who struggles with fear and then anxiety, and then when you are, fearful you you try to you 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 tend to avoid you you you, you tend to shut down um so try next time when you have fears or anxiety like try to approach what you fear try to do what you have been avoiding uh, try to speak up for your rights uh, uh like try to even your 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 body language and the and the facial expression try to do something against the fear um Sadness, for example, people who are tended to ha have problem with sadness, they tend to, again to shut down, to be passive, uh, hang uh, their heads. Uh, I, I want you to do the opposite next time. When you feel sad, try to be active, get involved, uh, set some goals, uh, stand straight, like uh, something opposite to the action we expect from this feeling. Uh, the same thing with guilt and shame. Lots of people struggle with guilt and shame, especially people who have depression problems. Uh, so the the what they do the the expected behavior from guilt and shame is self-destructive behavior, it's shutting down, avoidance, punishing yourself. Uh, um, so try to do uh, the opposite. So what 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 would be the opposite if it is unjustified guilt, like you, you don't have to stop doing what you whatever you're doing because you feel guilty. Okay, continue whatever you are doing. Okay, if if the guilt is justified, okay, like yeah, stop and make amends. Uh, don't don't dwell into the guilt and shame. Like uh, it is either you continue like you feel like this is uh, uh, this guilt is irrational, then then forget about it and continue with a positive uh action the behavior you're doing or the guilt is justified and uh, then you, you just uh, wait a minute like uh, think about it uh, try to make amends uh to fix the past errors okay so what is the exercise here that you're gonna do you tell me one or two emotions that you struggle with and you tell me what is usually the behavior that you have associated with this feeling and tell me what would be the opposite actions that you're gonna do in future if this feeling or you experience this thought or this feeling okay 
uh, if you want to learn, like if you want to like have steps, certain steps to do the exercise. So again, you tell me what are you the emotions that you struggle with, and why they are negative. Like why you wanna wanna regulate them? Like you're you're not happy with the anger, you're not happy with the sadness, you're not happy with the guilt. Why? Tell me why you wanna regulate it, and tell me what is the behavior, the negative ones that you you always do, like uh, uh, or the body language you 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 struggle with. And then tell me what would be the opposite action, okay, that you're planning to do. And if you want to give me details like this opposite action, how are you going to do it? When, where, with whom, for how long? Okay, so again, to simplify things, you're going to tell me what's the negative emotion you struggle with. You tell me the negative behavior and the negative facial expressions that you have when you have this feeling and tell me what you're going to do opposite. So this is our exercise number two. Okay, um, we, we're going to switch a little bit to talk. I told you DBT is four things or uh, four pillars. Uh, one of them is mindfulness. And uh, mindfulness is a Buddhist, uh, you know, concept, um, um, which like there is so many definition about it, but I, I choose the one, you know, most simplest definition which is to be mindful is to be aware of your thoughts feeling and the action to be aware of things okay and to be aware of these things you need to be present you know if, if, if so part of mindfulness is to be in the present moment okay uh, another part of mindfulness is but this is a higher level of mindfulness is to be aware of your thought emotion and action uh, without judging them without judging yourself or judging the experience. Again, it's going to take me an hour to explain what that means, but I just remind you of a story. You remember the farmer story? Um, remember the farmer who something has happened negative, something is positive experience, but he was, you know, like he, he was mindful and he was accepting whatever is happening because we can say that this guy is mindful, like he lived a life of mindfulness. Okay, but at least what we want to learn today is that, you know, don't try to be, uh, spend 90% of your life thinking about the future or thinking about the past, uh, because there is a saying, say, you know, if you put one foot, if you put one foot in the future and one foot in the past, you're going to pee on the present, you see? So, so, and the only thing we all own now is the present moment. But past is, is already gone. Future, we don't know if it's going to come or not, or we're going to live tomorrow or next month. Uh, anyway, people who pre practice mindfulness and be present uh, all the time, you know, as Dr. Ahn told us in a previous session, like mindfulness and meditation, you know, it 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 lessen depressive symptoms. It reduce symptom of an anxiety. It reduce chronic pain. It reduce binge eating. Uh, increase your relaxation and increase your skills to cope with stress and the difficult situation. So studies have shown meditation is and mindfulness is important and uh, have lots of benefits. Uh, again, meditation is, you know. Meditation and mindfulness is, is almost the same, but meditation is practicing mindfulness in a period of time. So you, you would say, you know, I practice meditation for 20 minutes twice a day. Okay, but I am mindful. I try to be mindful all the day. Um, um, anyway, to, to know how, how, if you are practicing mindfulness or not, we want to do exercise number three. Okay, I want you to go through all this list and tell me which one resonates with you. And if you check all of them, this means you, know, you are not practicing mindfulness as we want you to practice. Um, so I'll give you examples, and I, I'm sure you're going to resonate with at least one or two of these. Some people will be struggling with all of them. Okay, like, like the first one. Um, uh, while driving, uh, after you go somewhere, you don't remember which road uh, you you took and uh, what was the experience, what was happening. So this this uh, indicate that there is no enough mindfulness. Uh, if you are in a conversation um, and then all of a sudden you you realize you don't know what what the other person is talking about. 
Okay, and I'm sure this happened a lot. Uh, and this mean like you thinking about something that's gonna happen in the future, or you worry about something that happened in the past. You know, so or some people will will be having a conversation and. Um, instead of you listening to what the other person is saying, you just uh, worry about what you're going to say next and wh wh what advice you're going to give or what, uh, wh 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 what you're going to ask them for or how you're going to attack them or how you're going to uh, continue the argument. Like, uh, so this is also the, uh, a sign that, you know, uh, you are not practicing mindfulness. Some people even with reading, like with reading, this mean you you should be reading, focusing on what you read. But some people get lost when when uh, while reading, as you don't know what they are, uh, if they have no idea what they're reading about or what, what the book is talking about. Um, some people will walk into a room, and then they forgot or they don't remember why they are in this room. Am I here to pick up something? I'm here to cook, or I'm here why I'm here. So uh, walking into a room and suddenly forget what you are here for, this is also uh, not a good sign. Um, the same thing, you put your phone somewhere and you can't remember where it is, or you put anything somewhere and you don't remember where it, where did you leave, uh, or you don't remember where it is. Uh, same thing while taking a shower. Like we, we talked a lot about the shower, like lots of people use shower as a, meditation technique uh, uh, and mindfulness technique to to engage all your senses in in, in something and just uh, take the shower like for half an hour or 15 minutes is a time to relax and uh, shut down this um some people taking a shower and uh, they don't even remember if they wash their hair wash their hand you know which body part they they washed or not because they are not mindful um this one, the last one is a bad one, okay? Especially for men, you know, while having sex and then you think about something else or other people or other problems. Uh, and and you, all of you, I'm sure you know why I'm, I say it is important for men because there is a psychological erectile dysfunction. We, we have doctors here today and they tell us, yeah, when, when, uh, uh, when a man have an erection problem, it could be like vascular problem, like because they have cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, so vascular problem. It could be hormonal problem like low testosterone. It could be neurological problem because of back injury or something. Uh, but the most common one, like forget about all of these, the most common one is a psychological problem and the stress. Uh, and, and this can cause erectile dysfunction in people who are 20 or 30 because um, you're having sex and then all of a sudden you're mind start wandering somewhere else, then you lose the erection, then you feel like a failure because you lost the erection, and then um, this will trigger some fears. What if this happened in the future? Then sex become, having sex become a task or a, a chore is not something you enjoy. Then you start not enjoying it and you don't wanna do it as frequent because it, now it is a test, you, you succeed or you fail and because you failed once or twice you anticipate future failure and then the cycle continue and then your partner will feel that she is not as attractive or something and you you know the i don't have to go into details but you know you see how mindfulness can affect all areas of your life reading having sex taking shower driving have a conversation all these are um uh uh, showing signs that you don't practice mindfulness. So in this exercise, you do something, you check that the ones that applies to you. Um, okay, this is, uh, we're gonna learn a mindfulness exercise in this one. This is not an activity you're gonna do. This is an, uh, uh, after we finish, this is an activity we're gonna do now. So what, what I'm gonna do now, uh, I, I'm gonna ask you, like I'm gonna explain first, then we practice in, uh, we practice now. So I, I'm going to ask you to focus on your breathing. Then I, I want you to focus on one of the emotions that you have today or, or you had uh, yesterday, maybe anger, maybe I prefer if it is a negative emotion. Uh, then give it a name, like, it's, like you feel like anger, sadness, anxiety, whatever it is, jealousy, a negative emotion. And then 
I want you to feel if you feel it in your body or not. Like when you when you experience a feeling, lots of people will experience as a physical sensation, like chest pain, uh, tightness in their neck, like a blurring vision, headache. Uh, then I will ask you to let it go. And to be able to let go, I will make some visualization. I will ask you to imagine like there is a clouds, you know, uh, passing by and then you're gonna imagine that you are taking this feeling put it in in the clouds and the clouds are going away um, then we will go back to the breathing exercise again okay so what, what what i want you to do now is we're gonna start practicing this so i want you to close your eyes i want everyone attending to this session today i want you just to close your eyes and then I want you to start breathing in, breathing out slowly. So breathe in, hold for two, three seconds, then breathe out. Again, while you're closing your eyes, I want you to breathe in and breathe out. While you breathe out, I want you to count. I want you to count from one to four. So the first time you do it, close your eyes, then you breathe out, then you count in your mind one, then you do it again, two, then three, then four. So I want you to continue with the breathing. And then I want you to, to, to recall a feeling, uh, focus on certain emotion. It could be jealousy, guilt, something you struggle with today or yesterday. I want you to feel it. I want you to feel it in your body. Feel it in your chest, your abdomen. Feel it as a headache. Okay, now you feel the feeling. I want you to imagine there are clouds in front of you. So you engage. I want you to imagine there is clouds and you are taking all this negative feeling you put it in the clouds the clouds are going away then there is new clouds coming then you take some feeling put it in it you have a heavy load of negative feeling Take it all, put it in the cloud. We can and do a new image. I want you to imagine there is a train in front of you, train, and the train is passing by, and then the train stop every second. Is a train stop to so you can load, take some of the emotional load or fee or or pain and put it in the train, and the train is moving. And then another cart is there, and then you put more feeling into the train. You have anger toward your parent. Put it in the train. You have jealousy toward one of your co-worker. Put it in the train.
you have sadness because you lost money in business. Sadness. Regret. Put it in the tree. You have a dream that you couldn't achieve or a goal you set, but you can't achieve. And you have to let go, put it in the tree. Do we want to go back to breathing again? Focus on your breathing. Inhale, exhale. Forget about the feeling. Forget about the my presentation. Just focus on the breathing. I want you to slowly open your eyes. And then look at the presentation. Then you're going to look at me on the side of the screen. And you see, some people is easy to do and they are happy now. Some people, oh, wow, this is good. I want to practice this every day. Yeah, there is lots of guided meditation on YouTube. Use whatever you want. There is an app called Calm or Headspace. Calm or Headspace. They're very good. Lots of exercise with people who have better accent, better voice tone, you know, better flow. Uh, but I just wanted you to, to know that there is something called meditation, something called mindfulness. There is so many um, visualization you can do depend on who is gonna uh, guide you through it but again i like uh, i personally have calm and use it a lot there is people like headspace uh there is another one free i think it's called inside timer inside timer um what else yeah if, if you know a good meditation app especially for free like calm and headspace now there is a trial period and then you have to pay like 50 dollar a year or something um, but uh, if you know a free uh, good one, uh, put it in the chat, please. Um, anyway, um, you know, again, mindfulness to be in the present moment. Okay. Um, uh, this is an exercise you do at home, like all the time, ask yourself, you know, maybe four times a day, ask yourself, am I traveling in the future? Am I traveling in the past? Am I in the present, like ask yourself all the time, okay? Because you waste your life, most of your life, all your life actually is in the present moment, okay? I'm, I'm not saying we, we, we have to learn from the past. We have to learn from the past and we have to plan for the future. But 20% but, but of, your, of your energy, put it in the past, put it in the future, but 80% at least, put it in the present moment. Okay, and if you find you can't, you, you know, like uh, you have racing thoughts about problems that could happen, you catastrophize everything, you personalize, you think black and white and all this cognitive distortion, you know, an easy exercise just to start focusing on your breathing. It's going to bring you to the present moment. Okay, this is not an exercise that I we just uh, discovered in DBT. No, this is the exercise that You'll find it in Hinduism, Buddhism, and some Christian practices. Like people have been using this for thousands of years. I, I don't know why they focus on breathing, but it works. Just focus on breathing. You find yourself in the present moment. Um, okay. This is exercise number four. Uh, this is the second time for me to do this exercise. I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain it. Okay. Um, you know, people who are mindful, they are mindful of time. Like they are one with the time. 
Like they can tell you, okay, I think uh, now I have been in this place for two hours and this is enough. Now I have been in this place for um, half an hour. So they know uh, the time, they know the time, like they know how much they spend, even if they don't look at the clock, but, but they know, they don't check their phil- cell phone, but they know. So we wanna check this just to give us, I, I told you an exercise that tell us if you are mindful or mindless, you know, these things that you have been reading with me and we check them. This is an exercise gonna tell me if you are mindful and do you know the time or not? So how are we gonna do this exercise? I'm gonna uh, 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 close the, the, the PowerPoint presentation and I'm gonna put a timer here, okay? And uh, I will ask you to close your uh, eyes and then I will start the timer. And then when you feel that there is one minute passed already, open your eyes, okay? So again, I'm gonna set the timer, start the timer. Uh, when you close your eyes, when I tell you close your eyes, you close the, your eyes, I'm gonna start the timer. It start counting one minute, okay? When you feel that one minute is done, passed already, open your eyes. Some people will open exactly at the minute, you know? When the full minute pass, they're going to open their eyes. Some people will open their eyes less than a minute. Some people will open their eyes after a minute. Okay. If you open your eyes less than a minute, this means, you know, you are always in a rush. And you always believe that you ha- you don't have enough time to do what you need to do. And if you open your eyes after a minute, this means, like, maybe you are... Uh, frequently late for your appointment and you you think you have enough time but actually you don't so again i don't know if this exercise is that accurate it is has an indication but it will mean something for you so the exercise we're gonna do and then when we run the discussion you tell me this exercise what does it mean for you okay so uh again because i'm gonna close the powerpoint presentation we have four exercises. Uh, you, you can choose two of them to do, or if you want to do all of them, do all of them. We're going to give you only five minutes to do the exercise. The first exercise is to tell me two or three things you learned from me from the DBT. Okay. The second exercise, tell me about an emotion, a negative one, and tell me what is the, this emotion uh, what, what is the negative behavior associated with this emotion? And tell me something opposite you're going to do next time. Okay? So if you are at work and you're so angry or so mad at your boss and you're going to give him a negative feedback for whatever, then you're going to decide, okay, you know, no, I'm going to do uh, an opposite action. I'm going to maybe give him some positive affirmation or I'm going to give him a compliment, like something completely opposite. Okay, this is another exercise. Another exercise, tell me from this list, which one resonate with you? Okay, then exercise number four is, we're gonna focus, we're gonna do this now on a single minute. And you tell me if, did you allow less than a full minute to pass? Or did you allow more than a minute to pass? and what this exercise mean for you, okay? I'm gonna stop the share and stop the recording.